Hello and welcome. This time we are starting to talk about software. Yeah? Last time, last times we talked about the hardware. Yeah, we talked about how do things are connected and what is happening. Yeah, here the example of the von Neumann. Yeah? What was the same? Does not really matter if it's von Neumann or Harvard architecture. If you remember this, yeah? it does not. What is the same is this part here. The decoding, okay, and the execution. Uh, so this where this fetch the code. The code there must be somehow uh, written or there must be somehow given what to do. Uh, and those processors, to CPUs, those arithmetic logic units and control units and so on, they are nothing more than a logic circuit. Yeah? They have some inputs, they have some outputs, they have some, some memory. Yeah? This memory usually in the CPU is called a uh, register. Yeah? They have some registers, memories. And, uh, well, depending on the bit muster, on the bit muster, bit pattern of course, it's Switch to German. Depending, uh, the, uh, depending on the bit pattern, uh, they execute some command. Huh? So there are certain commands which are already built in, in the processor. Huh? These commands which are built in, in the processor are called meshing commands. Basic commands, meshing commands, and the whole set of instructions of these base commands, of these machine commands, is called instruction set. Uh, every processor type has its own const, uh, instruction set. Uh, it's not the same for Intel processor, it's not the same for Motorola processor, it's not the same for an Apple processor or Nvidia. They all have their own instruction sets. Uh, and they all have different numbers of instruction, different counts. Uh, so sometimes you maybe hear uh, Terms like RISC and CISC processor. Yeah. Write it down. So this is a RISC, a CISC. This ISC always means instruction set computer. Okay. And this R here means reduced. And the C here means complex. So we have reduced instruction set computers and, re and complex instruction set computers. This gives a little bit hint how many different base machine instructions, machine codes, there are. Yeah. It's not a real number. Yeah. Usually RISC computers have less instruction than CIS computers. Yeah. Uh, they are around 33 to 500 commands, possible commands. Yeah. Uh, also newer processors, newer, uh, newer uh, chips do that do tend to have a little bit more instructions uh, than older ones uh, because the complexity is simply in increasing. Uh, so there is not a sharp, is it up to 100 commands, it's risk and then it's this. No, 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 that's not it. Uh, what is risk and what is this? <sighs> there are definitions, but they are not that important to us because we are not computer scientists, uh, we are mechanical engineers. Uh, so, what we need to understand is that there is this processor, yeah? dark blue, I've never used dark blue, I think, oh, oh, doesn't matter. There's the processor, the CPU, inside there are some memories, these are called register. Yeah? And of course, there's the arithmetic logic unit. 
and this is the control unit. And all those things, they do have uh, a certain instruction set, like I said. Yeah? How is instruction uh, nominated to execute? Mm? This is with an operation code. Mm? So there is a certain bit booster coming to the control unit. This is interpreted as instruction and a according instruction is executed then afterwards. Yeah? Every instruction has usually the operational code. And then there are operands. One or two operands, depending on the opcode. The order and number of operands, this is fixed, depending on the operational code. So, so okay, that's it. And there are a number of, of commands we can use. So there are transfer commands, which do usually just copy data from the memory to a register, from the register to another register. Something like this, transfer, like I said, usually they're just coping. So this means at the origin, the data is still there. We just copy data to a new location, transfer commands. Then there are data manipulation commands. This means writing back to the memory, manim manim manip manipulate, ah, yeah, finally, manipulate the content of the memory somehow by writing to the memory. Uh, then there are arithmetic and logic commands where the ALU is coming to do attention. Yeah? Add two register values, uh, compare two register values, something like this. Uh, compare, add, subtract, number of arithmetic and logic commands. One operand is usually a register. Uh, the other operand may be fetched from, from the memory. Then there are input and output commands which can access uh, peripherals like the keyboard, like display adapter. Yeah. There are jump commands which will only manipulate. Here is the instruction pointer, instruction pointer in here, yeah, which will only manipulate the instruction pointer so that it is pointing to another next instruction. Okay. Jump commands. Oh, make a list here. Hmm, maybe a good idea. So I said transfer commands. Copy huh? from one location to the other. Manipulation, data manipulation. Right back to the memory. Okay. Then there was this arithmetic. logic commands uh, where we do compare or something like this one is usually register one operand the other operand can be chosen uh, then there are what's it uh, in and output commands which do address keyboard driver display adapter something like this then there are jump commands which will affect the instruction pointer. Then there are stack commands. And that's interesting because we have not talked about stack. What is a stack? Huh? Stack of cards, you know, stapel, huh? stack. Huh? A stack is a special form of memory where we can push something in and pull something out. Yeah. When we push it in, everything which was already pushed in, we will push in deeper. Call it deeper, or higher. Or we push it further. Let's call it further. Yeah. If I push a new data in, all other data are pushed. Yeah. Like if I put something on the stack. Okay, then what is already on the stack lies underneath. And if I pull a data from the stack, I will take the first one which is in. Yeah? If it's a stack, the stack of cards, the top one, or if you, the first one, the last one I've pushed in, I can pull out. Yeah? And then all others are appearing again, resurfacing. 
how are the stack used usually? Uh, there we come to the next uh, next commands. The next commands they are combined commands. Yeah? Combined. These are uh, subroutines, something like this. Yeah? Proceed, procedure, function, subroutine, simply. So we come to instruction point and then we jump to a subroutine. So there is the program yeah, with all the operational codes and suddenly we point to the next one. Yeah? This would be the next command to be executed and this command starts a subroutine. Now it will jump to a totally new, new, totally new location yeah? and the instruction pointer now is pointing here and now we execute here yeah? and then we are ready with the subroutine. Then all the commands in the subroutine are done. Yeah? Then we want to go back to here, right? Because this was the next command which should have been executed, however, it was interrupted by this subroutine. Where to store this command? This is exactly something for the stack. Yeah? Because if the stack if you is empty, I this position I pull in here. Look, then it's in here. Yeah? And if I come back, I pull it out again, I push it in and then I pull it out and I know where I put it, I know where to go. Huh? This even works if we interrupt the subroutine with the subroutine and then we are here. Yeah? So this should have been the next command to execute. Yeah? Okay? And then we are working here. And then at some point in time we're going back and we want to go back to here. Yeah? So this will also be pushed to the stack. So here it is at the stack. Let's also make it fit. Yeah? At the stack, the next layer on the stack. Yeah? And if I push it in, first this, then this. And if I pull it out, I get first this out, so I'm correct. And if I pull the next out when I'm ready here, I get the next one. Yeah? So this stack usually, this is some sort of memory which is used in calling subroutines. Yeah? It's a called so-called first in, last out, philo, philo, first in, last out, philo memory, yeah? or Last in, first out, Levo. Yeah. Whatever was first going in, it is the last which will come out. Whatever was last going in, it is the first which will come back. So these are the possible commands. Yeah. How many of them? Let's this depending on the on the type of processor. Yeah. Like I said, 33 to 500 around. CISC usually a little bit more, RISC usually a little bit less, modern a little bit more, older CPUs a little bit less. Hmm. This means basically our program, this is this, a series of instructions is called a program. Our program is hardware dependent. Okay. Just because I have a program, I cannot let it run on a different hardware yeah, because this operational codes, these bits and bytes, which are telling this one what to do, is telling the next one nothing. It simply doesn't understand. Or in worst case, do something stupid. It will not work, it will crash. So, that's the situation. Software is hardware dependent, depending on the CPU we are using. So this is the instruction set. This is the base. This is the base of software development. Okay. Every program 
in the end looks like this a serial a series of machine codes yeah. how to go to this yeah how we can reach this goal yeah. we cannot write ones and zeros in the correct order we would get crazy yeah so we're using programming languages these programming languages are topic of our next video then we're talking about what is a programming language and so on for this thing here for this machine interface i hope it's clear now i say thank you for listening and goodbye